Uh, let's talk about this big shift that we're seeing in China towards um, open source AI. It feels like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's becoming a, a more of a strategic focus of Chinese tech giants like Baidu. Thank you for having me. Yes, you are definitely right. There is an effort from the Chinese um, cloud service provider to move towards open sourcing their in-house models for a lot more developers to adopt and then to encourage uh, or rather to facilitate AI adoption across the wider enterprise space at the moment. Mm. It's interesting. Let's talk about Robin Lee Baidu because this is a guy that in the past has warned that open sourcing models would give away China's AI lead, but that kind of, he has kind of changed, what, what has changed that he suddenly decided that he wants to do open source AI in our cold earning? I think as sort of uh, you alluded to earlier, uh, DeepSeek has been a big game changer in sort of um, this era. I think we kind of move away from the proprietary areas of open AI, if I think about it. Now moving into DeepSeek where a lot of companies are embracing um, open source as an option, open source as a strategy advantage, as you said, to engage with the wider enterprise community. And I think Baidu see that as an opportunity for them to re re-establish their space in the, in the market and then trying to capture the attention of the enterprise out there. How does Ernie compare to Chinese rival DeepSeek and, and how big a threat is it to closed door providers like OpenAI and Anthropic? Um, Baidu has always been one of the top players within the China Gen AI market landscape and its model has always been recognized as one of the top models among the consumer space. There is, I think, in terms of the enterprise space, um, a lot of competition obviously out there. There is DeepSeek, there is Alibaba, there is Tencent Cloud as well, there is obviously Huawei as you mentioned earlier. The competition is becoming a lot stiffer, so there is th uh, that, that um, the intention to sort of obviously open up their, their ecosystem and to drive a lot more adoption. What do we know about AI? I mean, give us your take. Has Ernie, uh, what, what do we know about Ernie, sorry, give mm. us your take. Has Ernie, has Baidu's Ernie raised the bar in the AI industry? I think I definitely agree with that. I think they are one of the earliest players within the generative AI space. They have obviously sort of uh, came in as a key search engine players in China that gives them a lot of access to consumer data in China and a lot of insights around the cons consumer preference, around sort of how users like to use AI. And that gives them a lot of um, direction in terms of where then they can take um, Gen AI uh, into different domains. Mm. Uh, could it cement or could it help cement China's position in the AI space, leadership position in the AI space? I would argue that sort of uh, that is, that is quite the general sentiment out there where um, China now stands alongside US to be one of the two largest AI market. Mm -hmm. And that is partially due to the fact that China is one of the largest single market in terms of uh, AI ad adoption, but also at the same time, Chinese vendors has been quite aggressive in establishing themselves in the sort of tech leadership mm -hmm. in Let's AI. Let's talk about the AI adoption when it comes to Ernie, because a lot of people would use AI, uh, not because it's open source or closed source, but closed door, but but, but cost is basically an issue. We know that Baidu has come out to say that its Ernie X1 model delivers performance on par with DeepC at only half the price. Is, is this something, is, it sounds like Baidu is declaring a price war. Am I right to read it that way? I would say sort of a price uh, adjustment or price sort of uh, um, uh, decline within the um, the. LLM or the gen generative AI industry is a staple uh, development or is a staple trend. Uh, a lot of the um, AI vendors out there, inclu including the Western vendors, has been aggressively revising their pricing down just mm -hmm. to partially to sort of capture a lot more market you share. You have to justify their premium pricing, right? These close yeah. providers. I, I, I mean, sort of, um, obviously, there is a need to, uh, for them to establish themselves first in the industry. So they see um, sort of lowering price as a tactic to engage with a lot more enterprise. But also at the same time, as sort of a, the, um, the enterprise adopt a lot more AI, it does drives out the usage. So mm -hmm. lower price doesn't necessarily mean lower revenue. It actually means a lot more revenue further down the line. Do you see open AI and Anthropic fighting back? Do, do you expect them to come up with better, more powerful models? I think that has been the trend in the industry. That sort of, like that, that, that sort of a 
fierce competition between all the top vendors has been a constant uh, trend. Uh, generative AI coming out from China, the issue of market trust uh, is something that a lot of people talk about. Will Baidu's launch encounter skepticism uh, and will security become a big issue when it comes to Chinese AI adoption? In fact, I will take a step back and say China has one of the highly, highly, sort of the most highly regulated AI industry in the world. All of the Chinese model, uh, especially those that have to go commercial, uh, were registered with the Chinese authority, and they have a clear sort of like, um, procedure in terms of how that was being governed, how data should be used, and how consumers should be protected from uh, mal functions or mal sort of practice from the vendors. How much of this push in open source AI in China is being state-led, state-supported? I would say sort of um, initially a lot of the development came from the private sector, but as the sort of um, the AI adoption increases, we are seeing a lot more state-owned companies being sort of uh, uh, at the forefront of AI adoption, particularly adopting DeepSeek as a, as a tool to enhance their internal um, use cases and to augment their workforce. So that has sort of uh, driven a lot of the AI adoption in China. So you can partially argue that uh, private, uh, private public push on both sides, so it's sort of been the key uh, driver for AI adoption in Open China. Open source also means that people like uh, companies like Alibaba, Baidu have to give away their AI models so-called for free isn't it? I mean, won't it hurt chances of them making money? How, how will they recoup their investments? You know, that's a fair question. Um, I think some companies like Dixit, for example, they do have deep funding. They do use AI for other purposes within the company. And if you worry about, let's say, making open source a sustainable model, Meta or Facebook has also open source their Lima model, but it doesn't stop Meta from uh, converting those models or integrating those models into their other applications. And that has been driving a lot of revenues for Meta as well. So similar uh, practices has been uh, sort of uh, adopted by the Chinese companies. Uh, are they also trying to play the long game, you know, where they're trying to build a loyal developer community as opposed to making money in the short term? 100%, 100%, sort of de de developing um, developers' adoption and driving sort of um, uh, the communities within the AI space has been the key strategy by all these Chinese uh, cloud vendors. We all remember uh, Android, uh, Google, and uh, is Ernie trying to establish a similar sort of business model but in the AI space? I would argue so if they're go, going to the open source, uh, going, going down the open source direction. But it doesn't sort of um, necessarily mean that Ernie is the only option. There are many other, as you said, competent players in the market. There's DeepSeek, there's Alibaba, there's Tencent, and sort of each of them offer uh, sort of a, a, a slightly different sets of uh, skills and capabilities to the different enterprises. And ultimately, AI is a little bit different from the smartphone space in the sense that people do use AI for different things, and you, different models are good at different things. So there is no one-size-fits-all strategy in this case.